The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Is anybody here that's hungry? All the readings this weekend, including the psalm, talk about a banquet, rich wines, food in some way. And, uh, you know, I've never met a meal I didn't like, I guarantee. But I want to reflect on a different kind of hunger. Do, do you and I, in our lives, in the reality of our lives, hunger and thirst for a relationship with God. In the second reading, Paul talks about a secret and then he gives us what the secret is. He's talking to the Philippians. He says, I have learned the secret of being fed and of going hungry or living in abundance and of being in need. Here's his answer. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. In this world that is full of conflict and of distraction, the evil one is having his heyday. And I would say, I, I, I'm not an expert on, on uh, relations between different nations or cultures. I'm not an expert on uh, the world economy. But I would say, as a priest in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, who's been a Catholic all my life and who loves the Lord, that most of those people in conflict with each other and such are not thinking about, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. They're thinking about their own particular appetites, their appetite for power, their appetite for uh, land, their appetite for their ideology. And it's everywhere. I, I was on retreat this week with our priests and I heard a new term I'd never heard before. He called it death scrolling. Have you ever heard of death scrolling? It's taking out your phone and going through YouTube or social media or Google News or TikTok or whatever and you spend hours death scrolling. Why? Because there's no life in it. There's no life in it. It's a distraction. 
yet we get addicted. Been there? I've been there. I'd never thought of it in that way. And, and when we hunger, that's usually the stuff we hunger for. You know, what will satisfy my appetite right now? What do I want to do right now? What do I want? And Paul has figured it out. It's not about me. It's about God who gives me strength. It's my hunger and thirst for a relationship with the one who saved me. It's hungering and, and thirsting for a relationship with the God who created me, who has mercy beyond my understanding of mercy. And I would hate to, hasten to say that most conflicts that I've been involved in, I'm talking about me, I'm not talking about anybody here, but think about it a minute. If when that conflict is happening, if I would stop, take a breath, step back, and think for a minute, okay, is this a conflict over something that has meaning in life? Or is this a conflict because I just want something my way? And I step back, and I bet if I started thinking, okay, God, what do you think about this conflict? I'm sure there are times that God would shake his head and go, Father John, are you ever going to get it? Just like he did to his disciples. We're not perfect, we're human. But the reality is it's this relationship with God that gives us true understanding of love and mercy and what life is all about. Think about it for a moment. Jesus chose 12 apostles. And those apostles walked with him for three years in his ministry. And as human beings, as men of, of different backgrounds, they were just trying to understand what this thing Jesus was telling them was all about, this thing called love, this relationship that Jesus had with his Father. And just think about it a minute. Jesus chose them. Jesus is God. And he chose Judas the betrayer. He chose Peter, the one who denied him. He chose James and John, who were always trying to fight their way to the top. Knowing that they did all that. But then what happened? He died, they were devastated, he rose from the dead, they still didn't all understand it. But when the Holy Spirit came, everything changed everything all of a sudden Peter now who's saying just before Jesus you can't go to the cross please don't go to the cross I won't let him do it Jesus calls him Satan he goes from that to preaching a sermon and 6,000 come to the church in one preaching wow everything changes when this relationship is deepened when the Holy Spirit shows up guess what you and I, in our baptism, we received the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, in the afternoon, I did a baptism here. Cooper, he's here now. Is Cooper here? There he is, right there. I see him. About three months old, right? And his cousin Hazel, is Hazel here? Hazel's not. Hazel already went home. She was just a few weeks old. She got baptized before Cooper. She beat him into the kingdom. How about that? He's got the Holy Spirit, just like you and I do. But guess what? Distractions come. Life comes. And it takes our eyes off of this need for a relationship with God. And we miss out on the reality that Paul is telling us about. Through him, all I strengthen me. I can do all things. Not some things. Not a few things. All things. I do the things that are hard because Christ strengthens me. I do the things that are easy because Christ strengthens me. I do the things that cause me suffering because Christ strengthens me. I do the things that cause me joy because Christ strengthens me. And if we have that kind of relationship, then we won't just waste the time death scrolling. The temptations that come won't be there. And the conflicts won't seem so big. You know, 
it can be devastating. We can allow ourselves to go to the place where the evil one wants us to go, where we worry about every little thing, and we just get mired in this soup of junk. But no, God has better ideas for us. That's why we're at Mass. That's why we come. Once a week, there's this wisdom and keep holy the Sabbath. It's a simple thing. Come together once a week. You can come more. We have daily masses. We do. Maybe you didn't know that. You can take a bulletin. It's got mass times. There's other times you can come to church, right? But we come together as community. Individuals, we bring ourselves and our problems and our challenges and our joys and our sufferings and our pain and our grief and our happiness and we bring it all together once a week. And we bring it into this place that God gave us. It's called the church. No, it's not the building. Yes, we happen to be in a building. It protects us from the cold and the heat and all that kind of stuff when we got electricity. But for 2,000 years, Christians, Catholics have been coming to church. And why do we come? To come to the real banquet that we should be hungry for all the time, the relationship with God, who we, as blessed individuals in this church, get to partake in His actual body, His actual blood. Not a representation, the real thing. He is present here to us. There's wisdom in that. And then that, inside of us, it takes us and it changes us a little at a time. But it gives us then the strength to when we go out into the world, we don't get caught up in that junk that the evil one wants us to get caught up in. Because we're different. We're holy. Holy means set apart. We're set apart. We're set apart to be witnesses to God's love and mercy and grace. That's what we should hunger for. Oh yes, we have to have fried chicken and pork ribs and all those things that we're happy for and this to keep us going, right? We're physical bodies. Yes. But when we think about what God has put us on this earth for, why we're here, what is going on in our lives, we must take a step beyond that to this understanding that it's Christ Himself who is our Savior and relationship with Him that will really give us satisfaction, if you want to call it that, in our hunger. And it will probably make us hungrier for more, which is good. If you learn this, if you study the saints, you'll find that most saints are like this. They're going along in life and they're just like you and me and all this stuff goes on. And then there's a moment that they get it. Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be serving God. God is supposed to be the one whose will that I submit myself to. And it changes. Does it change overnight? Well, sometimes. Usually it's gradual. But then we honor them as saints now. Knowing why? Because they, like Paul, thought beyond just what's in front of them into what the reality is of our relationship with God. May we hunger and thirst for righteousness. May we hunger and thirst for God's grace and mercy to infill us so that we in the world then can be an example so that other people around us can see that God's love actually works. It's actually something that will bring. That's what will save our world. That's what will save our world. That's the strength that Paul is talking about. I can do all things through Christ. And then when we come together as a community here and all around the world, and we pray for those that are in conflict in these different parts of the world, the, the terrorism acts, the acts of war, all these different things that are horrible, that are terrible. When we pray, and we pray because of our relationship with God, those prayers can be heard. Not only as prayers, but also our daily actions in our lives with all we encounter. 
And we're the example because God has set us apart. May we be thankful that we're at the banquet. But may part of us also be hungry for those that still need to be invited. Because that's what the, land, the king wanted, huh? Hey, the ones that we're supposed to be having here, they didn't want to come. Go invite whoever they are, good and bad, and let's fill this place. That's what God has asked us to do. It's simple. And we can do it through Him who strengthens us.